Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Patrick here, and today I want to talk about something that seems to be a bit of a divisive issue amongst the jazz community, and that's the issue of iReal, or playing with backing tracks in general. And the reason why it's kind of a divisive issue is because, you know, for years, we're talking decades, decades, even before, you know, Jamie Abersall play-alongs that I'm going to talk about in, the, in a few, even before that, there seems to always be this contention, like, you gotta play with real people, or even outside of that, you got to play with the recordings, which I do agree with. I 100% agree. If you want to get as close to this music as possible, you got to play with the recordings. That's just That should be a no-brainer. But the other side of that is that the reality for most of us, including me about 20 years ago, most of us in, this, in today's world either are too young to have been around the masters or even if we were, are old enough to have technically been able to be in the same time period as the masters, we probably live in such a place that we can't even access them, either because of you know, our funding, the amount it takes to get on a plane ticket to go to one of these festivals or shows that has musicians, or for whatever reason that we may have, it's just, it's almost impossible to be in contact with these masters that can give us these lessons in person, or just anybody that's playing jazz in general. It's kind of hard for us to do that. And with that issue in mind, the question then comes, if we're supposed to be playing with musicians, but we can't, how do we get better at the music? So, of course, the next logical step is to, you know, practice your scales and your theory or whatever, and then try to find a recording to play along to. And one of the cool things that started happening in the 70s, and I, I guess I think it was the 70s, 70s, 80s, is that Jamie Abersall, who is a very established jazz educator and saxophonist who's responsible for basically teaching so many of us, including myself, about jazz improvisation and, and giving resources to play um, without having to go out and kind of fall on your face at a jam session, which you still should do, by the way. But the point is, as soon as the advent of these recordings came out, it offered a solution to a problem that a lot of people had, which is, I want to play with the records, but I don't want to solo over the solo that's on the record. I want to be able to play with these killing rhythm section members, because that's what we're supposed to do, but there's a solo going on. Am I supposed to just play over it? Well, in some cases, people do do that, and I think in some other cases, it might actually be worth it to try to do that, but basically, Jamie Abersall offered a solution to this problem by saying hey why don't we take these guys that are on the records take out the solo <laughs> and just give you an opportunity to play over these tunes with the real guys like for example if you don't know who jamie if you don't know jamie abersall as i just talked about you can go find a play along for example i think the 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 charlie parker play along with jamie abersall has was it ron carter ben riley and kenny Barron? hello I think that's a rhythm section. It might be, but but still, like regardless, they have been playing there. You've had, you. I think Billy Hart's been on them. Rufus Reed has regularly been on them. I mean, Cedar Walton is on his own play along. You can play Cedar Walton's music with Cedar Walton himself. Isn't that like a dream that all of us want to do? And people like Jamie Ebersol answered that dream. Of course, Hal Leonard also came up with uh, their line of play alongs as well. But basically, what the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because I think it's really cool that you have these play-alongs these this opportunity to get together in the privacy of your own home or wherever in the safety of your own home and practice licks and practice thinking about the, the the records and practice interacting moments any type of thing like that you can practice them on the records without feeling like you're getting judged at the session for playing five minute courses which this might actually help you to not do that because you can get it all your get it out all your get all of it out of your system at home but of course these play-alongs that came out we're not without criticism. One of the biggest criticisms that people had of the play-alongs uh, in general, all of them, not just Jamie Rivers but any play-alongs backing, as we call backing tracks now, all of those things in general, they had a lot of criticism. And one of the main criticisms that jazz musicians made, um, especially the, the pros and the top, I've talked with a lot of the pros about this, was that, you know, they're not listening to you. You know, the rhythm section is not listening to you. You know, this is like a problem that we're having is that people are just playing and playing. It's encouraging people to take too long solos, all this kind of stuff. And I think that's a valid criticism, but I actually kind of want to flip that around because even though that is a valid criticism, the way I used the backing tracks was less of a way to practice changes, which yes, I was doing that, and less of a way to practice soloing, which yes, I was doing that, but more of an opportunity to 
create my own moments, like simulate the moments that I heard on classic recordings like John Coltrane. If I want to play on the John Coltrane play along or, you know, the iconic moments of Charlie Parker or of Miles Davis or whoever, I could recreate those moments in my head on the record with the guys who played with those musicians. So if the drummer was in like two minutes and 50 seconds into the recording, I would like memorize a hit that the drummer did or at three minutes or whatever, the bass player would play an E instead of a B flat, like a tritone sub. I would almost practice molding my solos around that. And that's a really cool thing that you have an opportunity to do that you otherwise would not be able to do if you didn't have any recordings to do that with. And that's the main reason why I love these recordings. These are great resources to kind of practice not just licks, but musical moments that you otherwise would not be able to do with programs like I'm about to talk about, iReal Pro. Now, iReal Pro is for something that I would think would be an even more divisive hot topic. I think it would be even more of a divisive hot topic amongst jazz musicians. However, it's not as much as the Jamie Abersalls were. And I think there's a very specific reason for this. Now, I think the real reason why this may be the case is a little more abstract and a lot more complicated than I have time to explain in this video. But just kind of a quick nutshell introduction to this uh, issue. I think one of the reasons why this app is not as... Um, controversial so to speak is one because it's on phones now everyone can access them you know as a result of the app being on these phones and tablets or computers whatever platform you may use um as a result of that we now have unprecedented access and kind of preserved access in a time when technology is moving forward past the days of the mediums that these Jamie Abersol and Hal Leonard recordings were on, which were CDs, physical CDs. Of course, people would pass around, which, you know, <laughs> can't really advertise doing that, but we all did it. People used to pass around hard drives and flash, flash drives, all that type of stuff with Abersol's and Hal Leonard's on them. But when we're in an age now where some computers don't even have USB drives anymore, like MacBook Air has USB-C. So forget plugging in a USB, let alone a flash drive or even a CD. These songs that you might have accessed from the playalongs on the CDs, you can't even use them anymore. And so what ended up happening is that because Jamie Abersol and Hal Leonard don't have apps, they're not surviving as long as what iReal Pro is. Now, for those of you who are not very familiar with iReal Pro, what I'm talking about, iReal Pro is basically an app for iOS and Android and I think tablets and like I said before, that allows you to create lead sheets that are essentially interactive and they're based, they have backing tracks that are algorithmically generated based on parameters that you set with different stylistic things. You can set it to to Latin, quote unquote, unquote, straight eighth, funk, pop, and the most egregious and kind of problematic style that I'm going to talk about today, which is swing. So again, there's so many things I could talk about that make this video too long, but how can a robot swing? Is What's the difference? What's going on? Like, should it matter? Well, here's the reason why I don't like iReal Pro. There's a big argument in the jazz education scene and in jazz in general about how the biggest problem that people used to have with the Abersolds was less about the chord changes being wrong, less about whatever. They always complained about time. They complained about rhythm and complained about it not being in time, like it would move back and forth, a rush or a drag or whatever. And so as a result, people flocked towards iReal Pro when it was coming out, one, because it was a new app, but also because the main thing people were praising about it was that it's in time. It's like an interactive metronome. Not interactive. It's not really interactive, but it's, you know, basically a more dynamic metronome that has styles that you can listen to and play along with. And on paper, that sounds great, except it doesn't solve the issue of the human feeling in the music. Now, I'm probably going to make another video on this at some point to go in depth about this because that's not what this is about. But basically, my the thing, the issue that I have is that people are prioritizing metronomic time over time feel. And the as much as I listen, I've been using iReal Pro for 10 years, basically, at this point, over 10 years. I've created songs on there, which is how I primarily use the app. And if the creators of iReal Pro are watching this, thank you so much for making this app. You basically changed the world in a lot of good ways with this app. However, there's nothing anyone can do with AI or any kind of way. There's nothing anyone can do to make swing feel human unless you have humans playing it. It's I don't know what it is. There's something about it that makes swing so ubiquitous. And it's iconically human. And I have a fundamental disagreement with the idea that metronomic time is more important than having good time feel. I don't think anyone would argue that, but I think if you're going to pick one or the other, I would lean on the time feel part. Because if you think about it, the one thing that no one disagrees with is that we all should be playing along with the records. And a lot of people do not play along with the records as much, right? But the reason why we're saying that is because there was not any type of Abrasol or Howl Leonard thing back in the day 
when musicians like Charlie Parker, Louis Armstrong, or Dizzy, all of those guys, Sonny Rollins, Train, when they were actually learning this music and they had records they could listen to. There were no Abersols. I'm sure if Abersols and stuff like that existed for them when they were learning jazz, they probably would have taken advantage of it. I believe that. And one of the reasons why is because iReal Pro does not have musicians and humans playing on it. So having the ability to take out the solo and then put your own on and experience the feeling of the groove in the rhythm section to me helps you a lot more than just playing with robots, so to speak. Now, again, I'm not trying to talk any smack about iReal Pro. The point of this video is to not talk smack about iReal Pro. I think it's a great app. The point is to actually promote a newer player in the play along backing track circuit. And this guy's name is Phil Wilkinson. And I want to give a shout out to Phil Wilkinson. This is not a paid video. Um, I'm just going to say it right now. There's nothing sponsored. Nothing. I never met the guy. I basically just found out about him recently, like a few, few months ago. And I was kind of blown away because when I was trying to, usually when I try to learn a song, you know, I'll do one of two things. Or I guess I'll do both of those things. I'll look up the original recording or as close to the original I can get from the composer, like from the movie or, or play or whatever like that. And I'll learn the melody verbatim right there. But then I'll want to practice the changes. Now, I could easily just record myself playing piano, I guess, in the bass line or whatever, but is that really as good as straight up getting real musicians to play the tune with? So the song I'm going to be talking about today that I'm actually going to be playing is called How Deep Is The Ocean. So I decided to, let me see what's out there, because I didn't find, I looked up in my big old folder of Abrasol stuff, I looked up How Deep Is The Ocean, couldn't find a play along, or maybe I couldn't find one I liked, I don't remember, but I just decided, you know what, let's see what's on YouTube. And lo and behold, just recently, within the past year or so, there is some new backing tracks that came out from this guy named Phil Wilkinson. I've usually been kind of skeptical about playalongs on YouTube because, for, you know, they, they weren't the cats. So I used to be a little skeptical, you know, even though there's still great resources out there. But I clicked on this video and immediately I was like, hey, yo, this is swinging. And that's really rare because that's so important for learning this music is that it's not just about the harmony or even not just about the melody. You've got to have the rhythm. The thing that makes this music so different than other types of music is the unique way that musicians feel rhythm in time. So as a result of Phil Wilkinson, who is a great organist, by the way, showing up on the scene, we now have an answer to two issues that have been prevalent in the issue of kind of jazz education and playalongs for the past 40, 50 years. We now have playalongs that basically fulfilled the same role that Jamie Abersol's playalongs did with like having real musicians who could really actually play. And guess what? It's online. It's on our phones, computers, tablets, whatever. Just go to YouTube. It's on YouTube now. So now you have real musicians that are playing on a platform that everyone can access. To me, that's just the best combination of anything you can think of. Now, I will say there was an issue recently. The reason why I want to plug uh, Phil's channel is because he's been having an issue recently that all of us YouTubers have from time to time about copyright, where YouTube has like, started copywriting a lot of his songs and claiming them. And sometimes I think he, he, he even had to take some down because they were claiming that even just one note that might have been in a voicing or something was the melody. It's, it's so ridiculous. The, the YouTube sharks and ninjas out here kind of just, we got to do something about that. I don't know what we can, but it's, it's, it's really a pain. And I feel for him because I've had to take down some of my videos or just not even be able to publish them because of situations like this. But as a result, he has taken to, uh, wanted to promote his website, which I'll do right now for you at playjazztracks.com where you can find hundreds. I mean, there's over 200 jazz standards and in counting and counting. And I think by buying his tracks on YouTube, I mean, not on YouTube, but on his website, you can support him and help him continue to make these playalongs. So, but for right now, there's still a bunch of the playalongs that are available on YouTube and they're just really swinging. They're just really killing. I was very, very happy about these recordings and that's why I want to share them with you today. So without taking too much more of your time, I mean, I'm just gonna shut up and just let you hear what they sound like. Here's a clip of me playing along with his incredible recording, which is Oregon Trio, Oregon guitar and drums of How Deep Is The Ocean, a great jazz standard. <laughs> Thank you. 
So what'd you think? Isn't that swinging? I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Phil. It's banned. It's swinging. It's great. It's nice. They're playing the stuff the way it's supposed to be played. And when I say supposed to, I mean, if you're playing a standard in the style of the 1950s, well, there you go. Robots aren't going to do that. And the other thing that I liked about this is that I don't know if you can tell that I'm playing very differently here than I normally would. That's because I'm responding to the time feel. I'm responding to the way, the spaces, everything, the, the mood that they're creating from their style that they play, which is, again, the unique thing you can do with play-alongs and recordings that you cannot do with programs like iRealBe. I said iRealB, but I meant iReal Pro. But <laughs> again, I'm not trying to talk smack about iReal Pro, but because again, I use the even eighth straight, the straight eighths, the straight sixteens pattern. I use it all the time when I'm creating some stuff in odd meters and some whatever. And it grew. I'm actually surprised. Like it's actually pretty killing. The song that you know you've heard a song on my album that was actually inspired by <laughs> the way the rhythm section plays on this app. But just the sheer difference in the ability to play with humans and human sounding sounds whatever in general just being able to play with humans that are playing and interacting with each other on the record is just an opportunity that you can't miss especially if you cannot get to jam sessions in your area if you live 100 miles away from the nearest city but you have an internet connection well here's a great way where you can actually practice playing jazz and practice swinging with real humans so really give these play alongs a shot man i mean if you can get access to you know i i really think if, if jamie abersall and his crew is watching this video please get with the times please it's time Get an app or something. Put your stuff online because if not, you know, we, we Phil can't do all the work himself. <laughs> like, listen, if, if Phil, if you're watching, like, I know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're doing such a great thing. Phil is really putting out his time and energy. He don't got to be doing this, but he's doing it for y'all. So go support him and uh, all of his great, you know, play along resources that are on his website. Once again, at playjazztracks.com. I think it's really worth it. And all of the tracks, they have some great resources. They got some, you know, for, for train changes, for rhythm changes, blues, different tempos and everything. It's it's really awesome, man. So I, I really think you should go check that out. But yeah, that's it for this video, y'all. I wanted to just kind of quickly give a shout out to him and also to the other many great play-alongs that are out there. And I really think if you want to get better at jazz from home and you can't really go out, you should you should really consider this as, a, as an avenue. Um, if there's any other play-along tracks that you think are really good and swinging, if like for real, go ahead and comment them in the, in the, in the comment section below. I want to see that. If you have any other resources, go ahead and share them. And, of course, follow me here. F subscribe would really help. Hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of these videos. Go to the Discord where we're talking about all sorts of jazz things. And this is also an announcement for my Patreon. If you haven't heard by now, you can go ahead and join the Patreon. Uh, which is in the link is down below if you want to see exclusive stuff as in the people who are seeing this video first before they go online and some other things that you'll get um, exclusively as a Patreon member. So those of you who are supporting me already, really, really appreciate you. Thank you very much for that. All right, guys, keep swinging and uh, I'll see you all in the next video.